Bet you can't stick it. You're on. Hey, what's up guys? With E3 right around the corner, we're gonna be taking a look at six of the most iconic moments that shook our world. That's right, E3 is home to the most epic moments in gaming. It gets bigger and better every single year, and this year, mate, is gonna be amazing. Yes, E3! Yes, I'm so ready, oh my God, let's go! Okay, relax. There's still a couple weeks to go, relax. All right, all right, let's take a look at some of our most memorable moments from the history of E3. The big moment that sticks in my head for E3 is last year, which was the first time I actually got to go to the event in person. I grew up watching all the streams and always got really excited when they showed the big trailers for the new launches like Halo and Call of Duty. Especially when I was stood outside of the Xbox conference queuing up to get in and seeing all the cool in-game props that had been brought to life, especially the yellow Lamborghini from Forza Horizon 2, which I actually got to sit inside later on during the event in the Xbox booth, which was awesome. Then when we were inside the auditorium and everyone had been given these flashing Xbox bands, which we initially had no idea whatsoever what they were actually for, other than when we tapped them, they flashed on and off. And I can remember just me, Tom Syndicate and Strippin constantly clapping our hands like it was magic pretty much throughout the entire event. But that first ever conference really is a moment that personally sticks with me for E3. Now I wasn't there personally, but the only thing I wanted to see at E3 2003 was the sequel to the game that had persuaded me to buy the original Xbox, Halo. It's hard to overstate how important Halo 2 was for Xbox at this point. Console competition was strong and Xbox owners needed something epic to look forward to. Xbox needed Master Chief more than ever. And Bungie didn't disappoint, turning up on stage with a nine minute gameplay demo of Halo 2. It started with Chief, Cortana and Sergeant Johnson flying it in the airspace of New Mombasa and took us through a roller coaster ride of new Halo 2 features, including SMG dual wielding, warthogs equipped with gauss cannons, the appearance of brutes, and Master Chief's new ability to hijack ghosts on the move. And every single one of these reveals caused the audience in the room to go absolutely mental. But looking back, some of the most interesting things about the demo was the stuff that didn't actually make it into the final game. We saw a three-hit melee combo on a brute that we never saw again, and the battle rifle was semi-automatic rather than burst fire and didn't display an ammo counter. In fact, Halo 2's appearance at E3 2003 was really different from the game we played over a year later, but it did do an amazing job of keeping Xbox fans hungry for more Chief, and it did deliver the best two closing lines in any E3 trailer ever. Bet you can't stick it. You're on. In 2014, E3 punters found themselves in a rut. Technology had advanced to the point where game announcements could feature nothing more than a very realistic craggy face, and the crowd would go wild, muttering fervently about the visible pores and hair follicles. But oh, when was the last time something cool happened to our actual bodies? Worry no more, said Microsoft. Where are these mysterious wristbands? Were they GPS trackers? Secret watches? Bombs? The conference rolled around and the mystery was finally solved. They were twinkly things. Lighting up like a magical forest of stars in the audience, they provided a breathtaking backdrop for the totally new IP, Ori in the Blind Forest. The screen was blue and sparkly, and the audience was dark and sparkly. It was just beautiful. <laughs> One of my most memorable moments for me, three for me, was from two years ago when they revealed Titanfall, which literally came completely out of the blue. It was a game no one was talking about or expecting in the build up to E3, but was all everyone was talking about after the demo dropped. It was a new, exciting FPS franchise going away from the other shooters that come out year on year. And when you see that Titan rip out a pilot from one of the other Titans, you couldn't help but say, oh my god. Years of War was revealed for the first time at E3 2005, but it was 2006 when it had the chance to really enjoy the limelight. It opened the Xbox media briefing with a 30 second trailer, and then we got to see live gameplay. I was there in the room, and the combination of guns, locust explosions, and intense volume inside Man's Chinese Theater made my stomach go all fizzy, and my head feel like it was gonna pop. But the best was yet to come for me. The next day I got ushered into a behind closed door session to play a four versus four deathmatch on gridlock 
and the thing that really sticks in my head was just how good it looked. At the time, with the Xbox 360 just a few months old, Gears felt like the true dawning of the next gen. It felt genuinely cool as well, like breaking into the roadie run felt like being bundled inside your favourite war movie and there was a real sense of attitude and aggression that I'd never experienced before in a game. Now I don't mean to generalise, but the kind of people that go to huge games expositions tend to have gone to see games, not R&B superstars. Nevertheless, the people organising said press conferences aim their on-stage antics at the kind of people who enjoy dancing in front of large crowds, as they did with 2012's bizarre Usher-themed Dance Central bit. Get up! Yelled Usher to thousands of people that were much more content to stay sitting, probably at the least because they were writing notes on their laptops and if they stood up, the laptops would fall on the floor. Ooh yeah, stand up, he yelled. Nope. Never mind, Usher. Maybe try it with a bunch of people who've been drinking next time. So there we have it, six things that shook our world from E3. That's right, some incredible moments from years gone by, but this year is going to be even better. And we will be there in LA bringing you Xbox on videos and streams direct from E3. So make sure to smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any of that awesome content as well as if you enjoyed this video hit that thumbs up button and let us know in the comments what you want to see. Oh my god do you think this suitcase is big enough? <laughs> <laughs> Kate I think you could fit in there I think you'll be alright. I've tried I can. How much <laughs> stuff were you planning on bringing back? I was gonna bring back Phil Spencer. Uh, That'd be nice wouldn't it? Okay all right everyone we'll see you at E3. Bye. <laughs>